Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here. Now Splatoon is out in just a few very short days and I'm thrilled to bits to be able to tell you what we think of it. Now Nintendo as a general rule don't really go all out when it comes to releasing new IPs. They're a bit few and far between and it's understandable because with their pedigree they can't just go and release a load of new franchises that may well dilute their reputation. Splatoon is fairly unique in that sense then and it's a game that brings a huge amount of originality, wackiness and just overall fun to the Wii U. In the game you control an inkling, which is basically a sort of semi-human, semi-squid type thing that seems to be semi-liquid and just don't think about the science of it, just accept that these are the facts. You can turn into a squid and swim through any ink that's the same colour as you, which sounds crazy, and it is, and you basically run around and you shoot a load of ink anywhere and you can swim through any ink you've shot, it's brilliant. Swimming is incredibly important though and really crucial to the core gameplay and is much faster than moving around on your two standard issue legs. There are of course various game modes that you can play and of course multiple objectives in each. So let's start off by having a look at the single player. The evil Octarian forces have stolen the great Zapfish which powers the whole of Inkopolis which is the Inkling's home and it's your job to get it back. Every level is meticulously designed to incorporate the ink based gameplay to a beautiful, beautiful standard. The earlier levels have quite a gentle learning curve and it's quite a while before you're faced with any particular enormous challenge, but it doesn't matter because it's just so much fun, even though it's not all that challenging. Several levels also contain a breed of enemy known as Octolings, which, as their name suggests, basically behave the same as Inklings, and it's a brilliant way to break you into the online multiplayer. Whilst their behaviour is certainly not absolutely identical, it's close enough to give you a relative flavour. However, if you're expecting Splatoon's single player to stand up on its own, you're going to be sadly disappointed. As much fun as the single player is, and it is so much fun, there are only 27 levels and it really left me feeling like I wanted more. You can essentially treat the single player as a hugely extensive and very enjoyable tutorial that helps break you into the online experience and, most importantly, the controls. The game not only includes the typical twin stick controls, but also motion controls to give you much more precise and decisive movements. The controls are not that intuitive to begin with, but it is well worth investing just a little bit of time to get used to them, otherwise if you turn them off you're going to be at a significant disadvantage online. Furthering the single player experience are the amiibo. Now when you scan an amiibo in, you can replay the old levels that you had on the single player, but using different challenges such as using maybe a certain limited amount of ink, or a speed run, or using a certain weapon, it's that kind of thing. There are no new levels with the amiibo, which is nice because it means that people who don't own them won't feel that they're missing out enormously. However, considering the only game that the amiibo are compatible with is Splatoon, we feel like we should be getting something a little bit more substantial for our cash, because these things are not cheap. Also included in Incopolis is the Battle Dojo. Now this is a 1v1 local multiplayer mode that you can play with a friend. One of you uses the gamepad, one of you uses the TV, and a Wii U Pro controller or a Classic controller or a Classic controller Pro. The objective in this mode is to shoot as many balloons as possible and, of course, try and stop your opponent from doing the same. And it does feel like that this could be a mode that really would do well online, but for some reason, it's absent. It's not all fantastic though, the levels that you play in were obviously designed for 8 players at once, and so just having 2 makes them feel very, very barren. Also, the performance is a little bit choppy in this mode. Having said that, it is perfectly playable, you can still get fun out of it, and it would be a good way to introduce people to Splatoon who have never played it before. Let's be honest, it's better than just throwing them in the deep end online. Now, the main focus of this game, without a doubt, is the online multiplayer, which is split into two distinct modes. You've got regular battle and ranked battle. Regular battle is always the turf war mode, which I'm sure many of you know of, where you have to cover the ground with as much of your colour ink as possible. Rank battle is different and instead uses a game mode called Splat Zones, where rather than just trying to cover the entire map, you have a small area that you have to cover with your ink in order to decrease the timer to make you win. Obviously your opponent is trying to do the same, and because it's such a small area or areas in certain levels, then it really becomes a massive sort of tug of war style gameplay, and it's huge amounts of fun, it's so intense. But in order to be as efficient a threat as possible online, you'll have to customise yourself with gear and weapons. Gear is split into three categories, you've got shoes, tops and headgear. All gear obviously has cosmetic effects on your character, but it also allows you to have certain perks. These perks range enormously from things like increased damage and a faster running speed, to an enemy grenade slash mine indicator, and the ability to see the enemy with a waypoint over their head who just killed you shortly after you respawn. These perks really do change the way that you play, but not in any game-changing sense, and it's good in that way because it allows you to have a useful customization without emasculating lower levels. Now, arguably the most important choice you'll ever make in Splatoon, 
Which weapon are you going to use? Weapons are split into four different kinds. You've got your basic shooters, which are like a, an assault rifle. You've got your blasters, which fire like a grenade launcher. You've got snipers, which are snipers. And you've got rollers, which are a melee weapon that are very quick and very, very good at covering ground. This lineup may seem a little bit limiting at first, but there are so many different variations of them, all that come with their own sub-weapons and special weapons, that means you will have absolutely no trouble finding something that fits to your specific playstyle. But how are the matches themselves? Well, every single match is utterly unique to a level that we've never seen in a shooter before. Because of the ink mechanics, when you spray ink on the ground, that ground then becomes very useful for you, but very impeding for your enemy, and vice versa. This means that the geography is constantly changing, and you have to really be alert in order to make sure that you don't get stuck in somebody else's ink. Speaking of stages, the game does only have five at launch, but more have been promised through the medium of free updates in the future. It's certainly a lower number than would be expected in a shooting game, and ideally we'd like to see more, but regardless of this, it manages to feel fresh every single time you enter a match. And that really is a feat that we're sure most developers would give their right arm to achieve. The levels are basically symmetrical to a point, but they all have varying levels and vertical space and things like that, and they also have various routes, so there's no fear of bottlenecking. No single weapon outpowers another on any particular stage. It really has been designed so superbly that it doesn't matter what weapon you've got, you're still going to be able to play an extremely vital role. This is particularly important because levels are selected randomly, so you can choose that Splat Charger with confidence. Presentation-wise, Splatoon is a mixed if very positive bag. It may not have the highest polygon count or 4K resolution textures, but everything has been styled in a very modern, urban style that just oozes cool. This, coupled with the bold, contrasting colours and the lovely gloss over all the ink, makes the game a treat for the eyes. However, everything is rendered with a certain level of conservatism that has one massive, massive advantage. The game can load an entire multiplayer map in about three seconds. Yes, all the loading times are blisteringly fast. This is incredibly important because there's no hanging around every time you find a game, which is much more important than things looking just a little bit prettier. Overall, in a sea of rock-solid single-player Nintendo games, Splatoon stands out as a fantastic multiplayer experience. Everything is beautifully knitted together, and it works so well. It really shows that Nintendo can jump into the 21st century when it comes to online games. Whilst the online modes are definitely the best, the offline game modes are still incredibly enjoyable. And if your internet cuts out, you've still got something to entertain yourself. Splatoon is quite simply the freshest shooter we've seen in years. Miss it, and you will regret it. So there you have it. Unfortunately, we can't give a final score just yet, because we want to be absolutely certain it works just as well online as it does on the review copy when it finally launches. So instead, I'm going to go like this, and we'll put an annotation there with the score when it's released. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you decide whether that subscribe button is a kid or a squid, and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye.